ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى زواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him We seek His help and aid And we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us We ask Allah to keep us rightly guided We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit. Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead astray. And whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Ibad Allah. Ayyuhal Muslimun. O Muslims. If you're asked, who do you love? the most in your life who is precious to you who is close to your heart who do you look up to who do you take as a role model many of us will have different answers some of us will say our parents some of us will say our spouses some of us will say our children and even some of us will say that some sports personality or some celebrity but could we come back and say that the person that we love the most could be rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam can we look deep down within ourselves and say that the person we love the most more than everyone including our own self is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not only should we love him the most but love for him should supersede any love we have for anyone for anything in this dunya even our own self and we will see that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told us in Quran in Surah Tawbah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says Say, 
وأموال نقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين that in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your relatives, your wealth which you acquired and you love, your dwelling, your businesses, if all of these are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger, and jihad fi sabilihi fatarabbasu wait until the decree of Allah comes to you so then wait until Allah brings his decree so this is a threat from Allah azza wa jal like if you tell someone if you eat unhealthy wait and see what will happen to you so this is a threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you take this path and you love all of these things more than Allah and his messenger and striving in the cause of Allah, then wait until the decree of Allah comes to you. Wait until you see what Allah will do. So this is, if you take this path, and you love all of these things more than Allah and his Rasul and striving in the cause of Allah. If you do, then it is a disobedience to Allah. So this falls under the category of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then whatever Allah says was to conflict. Whatever Allah says was to conflict with any of these things, then who would you put first? Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you, become a conflict with these things that you love. Who will you put first? What's your priority? Your love will drive you. Whatever you love will guide you. And then, our love will guide us. And Allah azza wa jal tells us to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also told us to love him. As he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى أَكُونَ أَحَبَّهِ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ وَالِدِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ That none of you truly believes. Meaning, your iman is not complete. There is a deficiency in your iman. Your iman is not complete until I... I'm more loved to you than your parents, than your children, and all of mankind. Meaning, full Iman, you have not, you have not tasted the sweetness of Iman. You have not tasted the sweetness of Iman in your tongue and on your body until the love for the Prophet wasallam precedes, supersedes the love for everything else. So now you say to yourself, is this something that we can do? Is this achievable? Is this practical? Well then, the answer to that is, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that you should strive towards it, then it's an obligation upon you. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala told us about it, then it's an obligation upon you in the Quran. So it is achievable. It is practical. It is doable. So the reason it seems difficult today is because we do not know his life too much. The reason it seems difficult today is because we are so distant from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are distant from him. We tend to look up to other personality for our guidance, for our example, especially our youth. They look up to personality, sports personality, celebrity. They follow them on social media. 
But when you ask them about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they hardly know anything. Basic knowledge they have. So ask yourself, why would Muslims love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much? Think about it. Why would you love and follow someone? The reason is, you would love and follow someone because of external and internal reasons. Because they're kind and good to you. Uh, you love your wife because she's kind and good to you. She's loving. You love your parents because they're kind and good to you. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more than that to you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's look at some of the reasons why we should love him so much. You should love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because if you love Allah, shouldn't you love what Allah loves? If you love Allah, shouldn't you love who Allah azza wa jal loves? Think about it. From the time of Adam alayhi salam to the day of judgment, who is it that Allah azza wa jal loves? That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does that tell us? It tells us that he was the best of Allah's creation, the best of heart, the best of character, the best of conduct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at him and chose him above all of his creation. So we would only get to see and speak to Allah after death. We would only get to see and speak to Allah after death. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets to speak to Allah while he was alive. That's an honor. That's an honor at the mirage. So there is no one on earth who is more kind than the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no one on earth who is more merciful than the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. More loving more caring than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when you look at his life, his kindness, his patience, his honesty, his leadership, they're unmatched. So he deserves our love. Another reason why we should love him is that for what he has done for us, for what he has done Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for us, Think about it. More than what our parents have done for us. Our parents or anyone in this world cannot benefit you more than what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has benefited us. Think about it. Your parents brought you into this life physically, bi'idhnillah, with the power of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought you to spiritual life bi'idhnillah. His path is the path to Jannah. His path is the path to success in this life, earthly life, and the path to eternal happiness. So what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave you is more than even what your parents give you. Your parents, they, they can harm you they have a good intention for you. Although they have good intentions, they can harm you. Or they can encourage you to do things that will harm you now or later. But not the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is concerned for you. He is concerned for each and every one of us. So he opens the gate to Jannah for us. While others, other people can close the gate to Jannah. So he is not like other people that is selfish, that will can close the gate, the path to Jannah, that will jealous you, not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why I'm saying that it is achievable, that this love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's achievable. There is an example. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, in a famous hadith, he tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O Messenger of Allah, I love you more than anyone else. 
I love you more than everyone else, more than my family, more than everybody else, except myself. So he's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he loved him more than himself. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No, O Omar, until you love me even more than yourself. So think about this for a second. Can you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even more than yourself? This is the level that we should try to achieve. This is the height and the threshold, the, the, the level that we should try to achieve. And then Umar radiallahu an, he thought about it for a second. And then he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I love, no, he said, I love you more than myself, O oh, Messenger of Allah. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Now you have reached that completion of Iman. So now you have reached that level. So look how quick the companions, they were quick to follow Allah and to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the level of their Iman was so fertile that without any hesitation for us, if, it's, if it is not something within our schedule, if it is not something without what is convenient for us, then we say, I follow a different scholar. We put, some, we put someone else above the sunnah. So this is how the companions were. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab, that he was quick. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, I even love you more than myself. So this was, was so quick, they were able to to put the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam above themselves. So, O Muslims, to put the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam above your own self, Allah Azza wa Jal told us in Quran, and Nabi Awla bil Mu'minina min anfusihim, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is more closer to you even than their own self. And this is why the companions, they were willing to sacrifice their lives defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at all the battles. Look at the battle of Uhud. They were willing to sacrifice, shielding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with their own lives, with their own bodies. There is one hadith, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an, he said, I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yet I could not describe him because I never look at him when I was talking to him out of respect for him. Subhanallah. And then Ali radiallahu an, he say, he would say that we used to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam more than our family, more than anyone we know, more than even cold water on a hot day. Subhanallah. So this is the love. So this is a love, and you may ask, what's the reason for this? Why? Because of the level of their iman. Because of the level of their faith, their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was next to them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in their midst. And also they understood that love was an obligation from Allah and from the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in fact, it's a privilege. If he is not the object of, of your love, then who is? If he is not the object of your love, then who is? That spot, that space in your heart will be filled with someone else, with some sports personality, some, some make-believe celebrity that you will look up to that you will, you will pattern your life with. You try to copy them with everything, their hairstyle, their dressing, their way of talking, the way that they go about interacting, you follow them on social media. So if that spot is not in your heart for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then someone else will take, will fill that spot. So O Muslims, and sadly, we aim for success by following these so-called celebrities. We view success as becoming like them and emulating them and become rich like them. 
the way that they have done it. So this is what our young generation also, they're emulating these celebrities. So where is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in their lives? Where is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in your life? So, O oh Muslims, then we have to ask ourselves, if someone else occupies our heart with that love, then can we really say, remember the question I asked in the beginning, can we really say that we sincerely love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as we should? Can we really say that sincerely we love the Prophet? Well, this is a question for each and every one of us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlil uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'd. O Muslims, you may ask yourself, how can I love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How can I increase my love for him? Well, here are some ideas and some steps that we can take to increase our love for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, we must understand how much Allah Azza wa Jal loved him. And we must understand how much he loved Allah Azza wa Jal, that he was the Khalilullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken our Prophet and Ibrahim alayhi salam as two Khalilullah. So we first of all have to understand that you should love who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken these two as Khalilullah. The love of Allah has penetrated their hearts. That there, in these two men, that there, there was no room for anyone else to occupy that position except Allah Azza wa Jal. And then, think about what He has given us, as I mentioned before. Think about what He has given us. So think about it and ponder upon the gifts that He has given us. That the more you ponder and reflect upon it, that the gift that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he opened the door to Jannah for you, while others can close the door to Jannah. So think about that what he has given you, and this will motivate you. This will drive you to love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam more. Next, get to know him more. You will only increase your love for him if you get to know him more. So you have to study his biography. You have to study his seerah. Not only shallow ways to know when he was born, when he died, to know the details of his life, how he dealt with, with, with uh, challenges of this life, how he dealt with his family. We have so much, so much problems today, depression, stress. If we turn back to the sunnah, it will help us. How he dealt with his family, how he dealt with people, his leadership qualities, so many things that we need to take away from him, from his life. And then, we need to teach his life to our children. And this is the only way. We need to teach his life to our children. But if you don't follow him, then your children will say, Dad, you hardly know him. Why, are you want, why do you want me to follow him and you don't even follow him? So this, my brothers and sisters, is something that we should do to teach our children who, who should be their role model. In addition to that, we need to love him and follow him. We need to love him and follow him in every aspect of our lives so that we can able to motivate our children and the next generation that they should look up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another way is to mention him often. Mention him often. If you love somebody, you talk about them. If you, if you love someone, you will always speak about them. So mention him often. Do it at school. Do it at your job. Tell them about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should be proud of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another way is to constantly send salah and salam upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
send peace and blessings upon him as he said sallu alayya fa inna salatakum tablughuni haythu kuntum send peace and blessings upon me for it reaches me for, from wherever you are so so get into the habit of that and especially on fridays as he said inna min afdali ayyamikum yawm aljumu'ah faktiru alayya salata fihi fa inna salatakum ma'rudatun alayya that friday is the best day of the week so increase your peace and blessings upon me for the angels deliver it to me so increase your your salah and salam upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam especially on fridays and then whenever his name is mentioned remember to always say sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he said man salla alayya marratan sallallahu alayhi biha ashara that whoever send peace and blessings upon me once allah will bless him 10 times so o muslims and most of all is to follow him to follow his sunnah to follow his way of life uh, what, what 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 was his food like what was his dressing like try to follow him in everything what was his childhood like so so if we study him then we will follow him follow his life and remember remember before i close that we should not exaggerate in our love for him that we should not exaggerate in our love for him as he told us la taturuni kama aturatin nasara isa ibn maryam walakin qulu abdullahi wa rasuluh that do not overpraise me as the christians praise isa ibn maryam walakin say abdullah slave of allah and rasul rasuluhu and his messenger so do not overpraise him do not go to extreme and involve in bid'ah an innovation uh, in our exaggeration or of our love for him remember when you fall into religious innovation then there are there are repercussions our actions will be rejected by allah azza wa jal our tauba will not be accepted as he said verily allah does not accept the tauba of the sahibul bid'ah the one who commits inno innovation until he stops the bid'ah and then remember the ahlul bid'ah have been warned about the hell fire so we do not want to go to extreme and, and doing things that he never taught us about the deen kullu bid'atin dalalah wa kullu dalalatin fin nar that every bid'ah is a misguidance and every misguidance will be in, in the fire so my dear brothers and sisters we have to be careful about that so oh muslims if we love the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are supposed to as we are supposed to then our prayer should be like him our way of life should be like him how he taught us this way of life and then finally what do we get from this love from this love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the consequence well one person came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said o messenger of allah i love you more than anyone else i am happy when i'm with you but when but i'm i'm worried that when you are in jannah at a higher stage in a higher status i will never get to see you again and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and those who obey allah and his messenger they will be with the prophet to the end of the ayah and then there is another hadith that gave the companions hope an arabi a bedouin arab came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said O Messenger of Allah, mata saa, when is yawm al-qiyamah? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what have you prepared for it? And he said, I haven't done much charity, haven't done much salah, haven't done much fasting, but I love Allah and his Messenger. And what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, he said, al-mar'u ma'aman ahab, that you will be with the one you love. So, O Muslims, even though we may made mistakes we may make mistakes and we do but if we genuinely love allah and the prophet we still stand a chance to be with him to be with him in jannah bi'idhnillah so i pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in jannah amin ya rabbal alamin rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير ما سعى لك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم
اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقيم الصلاة